you have to take great care when using resistance bands that you don't get the whip back effect. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today I'll give you three basic exercises to get you started using a resistance band, which is a great form of strength and conditioning training. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice and exercises each week to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. So in this video, I'm going to provide an upper body push and an upper body pull and a deadlift using the added resistance of the bands to work the majority of the main muscle groups within the body. If you've not used resistance bands before, then you're watching the right video as this will take you through the basics and it will be suitable for most health conditions. But it will be dependent on your physical ability if you have any neurological impairments. There are different types of bands you can use for these three exercises. I'm going to be using the typical tubular band as it has handles at the end for increased control and comfort. And you can get these from most online department stores such as Amazon. However, you can also use closed loop bands or therapy bands for these exercises depending on your strength and ability. As you progress and you start to find the exercises easier, then you can change the color of the band for an increased resistance. It's worth noting here that bands work differently to free weights, such as dumbbells, in the sense that the resistance or tension changes as the band changes its length. Therefore, it's important that you set up each exercise correctly before starting the movement. Right, let's run through the three exercises. The first exercise I'm gonna do is the chest press. So I've got my tubular band with the handles on the end, and initially I need to make sure that I can secure this to an anchor point. So I'm going to use the top of my banister that's got a little lip on the top so it will stop the band from flying off when I start putting pressure on it. It's also important that whatever you choose as your anchor point is secure enough so when you start pulling the band it's not going to give way. Once I've set that up I'm then going to take hold of the bands so the anchor point is behind me. And you can either have your feet a shoulder width wide or what I would suggest initially is that you put one foot forwards, one foot back just to give you a stronger base of support which might make the exercise slightly easier initially. And, and then from there you need to then get some tension on the band. So if I'm obviously back here, there's no tension on it yet. So I need to move myself forwards until I can start to feel my hands being pulled back. So there's already tension from this start position. So from there, I'm gonna make sure that I'm keeping my body in a nice upright position. The hands are just either side of the chest, and then from there I'm gonna push the arms away, which is stretching the band, and obviously as the band gets more and more stretched, there's more resistance, so it gets harder as it goes further out, and then control it back slowly until the fists come either side of the chest again. The elbows are always gonna stay slightly lower than shoulder height, so I'm not lifting my elbows up, keeping the shoulders down as I go through the movement. And as we would do with any resistance training, ideally, as you're doing the hardest part, which is the stretching of the band, you breathe out. And then as you then do the easier bit, which is the lowering phase, that's when you then breathe in. Don't worry if you get that run the wrong way initially. Just try and breathe with the movement. But it should be a slow, controlled motion. So you're in control of it. And then you'll feel the muscles across the chest, the shoulders, and the back of the arms begin to work. Now, to make this exercise harder, Obviously, I can move myself further forward, so already there's more of a stretch on the band, more resistance, so that makes the exercise harder. Or you can change your base of support, so I can bring my feet together, which means I'm placing a little bit more emphasis on the core muscles. Or then at that point, you can obviously then change the actual resistance band and use a harder resistance or start to double up. So that's different ways of progressing the exercise. If you are using a therapy band, you'd loop the therapy band around in exactly the same way. Um, and if you're using one of the looped bands, then you, to get that to your anchor point, you just need to take one end of the loop through, round the anchor point, through the other end of the loop, and then pull it out, so then you use it that way. So there are alternatives to this exercise. But that is the chest press. Okay, the second exercise we're gonna do is the standing row. And this is basically the mirror image of the chest press. So rather than us turning to face away and pushing the band away, we're gonna turn and face the band, so where the anchor point is, and actually pull the band towards us. So we're working the opposite muscle groups across the back. So this time, same sort of setup in terms of your anchor point. So you ideally want it about somewhere around waist to sort of chest height. 
um, and make sure it's secure. And then I'm gonna turn and face it. You can either choose again, like I did with the chest press, with, to have your feet side by side, or if you want that increased base of support, just stagger your feet slightly one foot in front of the other. I want to make sure that I move myself away from the anchor point, so already I can feel some tension. So with my arms straight, which will be your start position, I can already feel like my arms are being pulled forwards. So that way I'm having to engage my lower back and my core muscles to make sure I can stay in an upright position for then to me to be able to work against that resistance band by drawing the shoulder blades back together bringing the elbows back and as I stretch the band I'm trying to get the fist to come either side of the lower part of the ribs. That's my finished position and then control it back down slowly to the start position. So obviously as I stretch the band further it's going to get harder and harder and harder at this point to try and bring it right into the ribs and then slowly lower it back to the start position. So that's your motion for the seated row. Again if you've got the therapy band then you can do the same thing with the therapy band. Setup's gonna be exactly the same. And if you've got one of the loop bands, then again, same sort of setup as the chest press in terms of how you set it up as your anchor point, but the movement again will be very much exactly the same. So that's the standing row. Right, the last exercise is the deadlift with the band. And this time, the anchor point is actually going to be your feet because you're going to be standing on the actual band itself. So what we need to do is we want to make sure from the point of where the handles are and where the band starts, we want about a good sort of six inches from that point, maybe sort of more six to nine inches. And that's pretty much where you're going to be standing on the band on each end. So that might mean if you've got a longer band like I've got here, you might need to just loop it round on the floor a little bit so that you can give it six inches either side to actually stand on. So you've got this loop band bit in the middle. So I've got my feet about a shoulder width wide. Now already there, with my knees slightly bent, and where I've got hold of the handles, already I can feel there's a little bit of tension in the band, so that then from that position, as I then stand up, stretching the band, pushing my hips forwards, that's obviously getting to the hardest bit. Now there's a huge amount of tension now through the band. And then I lower myself back down to the start position. So important with this one, if you keep your head and your chest up, your lower back needs to stay relatively flat. And what I mean by flat is a neutral spine position. So the best way to do that is stick your bottom backwards as you lower yourself down. But what there should be is the movement from the hip. So I'm bending at the hip as I go down. And then at that point, when I can feel that down the back of the legs, I'm gonna start bending at the knees to lower down a little bit further. And then to straighten, as I come up, I'm gonna straighten the knees, hips then drive up and forwards to get to the standing position. And that's where it should feel the hardest in terms of the resistance on the band. So that's the deadlift. If you're using the therapy band in the same way, you can just stand on the therapy band, grab hold of the ends and do just stand up with it. So you're stretching the therapy band as you come up. And then if you've got the looped bands, you can basically then grab hold of each end of the band and then stand on the middle of it. And again, doing exactly the same thing. Probably the hardest part with this one is technique. It's particularly for the lower part of your back because you're using a lot of the muscles in the legs uh, around the hips around the knees and also into the lower back and also the muscles in the upper back to a certain degree to stabilize you in that position as you go up and down so that's the deadlift I hope you can take something away from this video today if so please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below and share this video with friends to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from it Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active, keep moving and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.